Summer is officially here, so that means a ton of get-togethers, barbecues, all of that fun stuff. And so today I've got a ton of Cricut DIYs for you so you can personalize both your entryway slash porch, also items that you can use to entertain, so you can use them all summer long. This is Whiskey and Wit, I'm Whitney, and on this channel I love to share DIY and budget home decor as well as Cricut tips and wood builds. So if you love all things DIY, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. Also a huge thank you to Blondie Next Door who I'm collabing with on this video. She will have a ton of Cricut DIY inspiration for you as well, so be sure to head down to the description and head over to her channel after you're done watching mine. On a recent Walmart trip, I saw this section of Better Homes and Gardens stuff for outside. My store was pretty stocked and I was super inspired for this video. So the first project is going to use this utensil caddy that came from that collection. It's got this really nice wicker wrapped handle and it's got different compartments to easily organize your utensils, but I wanted to use it to make a s'more station. So I went into Canva and designed this file to fit the front of that box and then cut it out on some black map vinyl. I will link that file down below. You can head over to my blog and get that for free if you want to make this yourself. So then once I cut it out, I went through the process of weeding it. And honestly, it looked kind of intimidating, but it actually weeded pretty easily, which was great. I just had a little A run away on me. And I trimmed it down and stuck it to my container. And it was seriously that simple. And the last step was to fill it with some goodies for s'mores. Side note, I found these at Walmart too. And oh my gosh, they're cookies and cream, red, white, and blue. So good if you like cookies and cream. Anyway, I digress. I filled it up with all of these fun s'mores supplies. And I love that everything stays in its own little cubby. And also that handle is awesome. How many times have you taken stuff out to the fire? You've got graham cracker boxes everywhere. Your marshmallow bag falls all over the ground. This is awesome because you can see everything that's in there. Easily grab what you need. If somebody takes part of a chocolate bar, no problem. They can stick it back in there, grab a marshmallow and then just grab the handle and bring it back in after your bonfire. I think this is so cute. We'll probably use this on the 4th of July. And another thing you could do is if you want to use this for a cocoa bar or something, just use removable vinyl and you can pull it off after the season. So this one is great for those times that you are going to someone else's house. So I grabbed this Pyrex at Walmart as well. It is a decent size, it's pretty deep, and I wanted to try to etch it, one, because I've never tried to etch Pyrex, so I wanted to see how it would work, and two, I'm always forgetting my stuff at people's houses, so now they'll know it's mine. So to do this, I grabbed a bottle of Armor Etch. You can get this for about 10 bucks at any Amazon craft store, etc. And I went through and created a stencil. So I just typed out in Canva fresh from Whitney's kitchen with some of my favorite fonts. And then I cut it out on my Cricut and weeded it. Now when I'm weeding, I'm creating a stencil versus weeding out the letters like we did for the last project because I want to get rid of the pieces where I want my etching to go. I added on my transfer tape, made sure to give it a good covering with the squeegee just to push it down the little scraper tool, and then I applied it to the side of my container. You can also etch the bottom of your container, but because it said Pyrex and it was kind of raised, I didn't feel like messing with it, so I decided to put it on the side. And then it is time to etch. So I just took a little popsicle stick and some armor edge. I found that this works a lot better for me personally than a paintbrush. You can really coat it on, make sure that you cover all of the letters and all the little crevices, and then you're gonna let it sit and develop. What you're doing with this etching cream is it's just going to eat just a little bit into the glass veneer and the finish on the outside so that you can lightly see the words that you're etching. The Armor Etch container says three to five minutes. I usually go for eight to 10, and then I go ahead and rinse everything off. 
Do not touch the armor etch directly until you are doing this washing off process, so don't apply it with your hands or anything. There's warnings all over the bottle, but just be safe. Once it's wet, you can kind of wipe it off with your hands. If you're worried about it, you can put on some gloves and it's easy. Then I'm peeling off my vinyl because once it's wet, it makes it a lot easier to peel off permanent vinyl. And then I'm just grabbing a little bit of soap to wash off the side. Wait for it to dry and you'll be able to see your etching that you did on the side of your container. Honestly, for people making a big deal about Pyrex not being etchable, this worked out really well so that people know that it is my container. And it's just a cute way that's not too gaudy or over the top to kind of mark your stuff. In that same section at Walmart, I found this really cute nautical looking jug and stand for a beverage dispenser. And so I wanted to find a way to also subtly make this over. And because I was already etching the other container, I thought this would be awesome to etch as well. In addition to that jug, I grabbed some of these little square drinking glasses. These were under 10 bucks for a set of four so that I could make a full set. The first thing I did was go into Canva and create a square design so I could create my little monogram. I decided to go with a C monogram with a little floral laurel along the outside and it gave it a classic look. I made sure to measure both my jug and my cups to decide how big I wanted my stencil. And then when I went to cut it out in design space, I made sure to give it a little bit of space around the outside so that that would cover the glass and protect it from etching. All you have to do is select your item and drag it to the spot of the mat that you want it to cut. You don't have to leave them all up in the left-hand corner. And then I use some permanent scrap vinyl to cut out my design. And we're gonna do the same process here where we are weeding it as a stencil. So weed out any pieces where you want to etch. I applied my stencils to both my jug and my four glasses and used the same armor etch technique to etch them. Like I mentioned in the last project, I do about eight to 10 minutes and usually about halfway through, I go through and make sure everything is covering all the different areas. I try not to drag it too hard, but I kind of rub it around to make sure everything is coated. Then I follow the same rinsing process and we're done. What I really love about etching glass is that it's completely permanent. So you can toss this in the dishwasher and you are good to go if your glass is dishwasher safe. The jug was about $14, the glasses were about 10. So for about $25, you've got a really great housewarming gift, wedding gift, or just something you can use all summer to entertain. I've also done sports logos, you can do names. There's a lot of different options. These are also great for seasonal if you wanna do that. Now I didn't wanna leave the drink riser that I grabbed just plain, so I decided to start with a summer makeover. This matches that utensil holder that I got for the s'more station, and you could also flip it over and it doubles as a bucket that you could put ice in as well. So in Canva, I just did a really simple graphic. I will link this down below if you would like to have the same design that I did. So I cut it out on black matte removable vinyl. And the reason that I did that is because I don't plan on using this with Hello Summer all the time. Because my jug is just neutral, I could go through and do Hello Fall and do a fun sangria. I could do something for spring, Merry Christmas, different holidays, 4th of July, etc. So I wanted to leave it open. So I just added some removable vinyl and applied it to the front. I also decided to go with the matte black just to keep it neutral, just cause that's my style with our outdoor decor, but you could easily do a really fun sun yellow or whatever matches your decor. I absolutely love how this whole set turned out. You could also put the last name of somebody if you wanna do a wedding gift with this whole set, establish 2021, it would look so nice. Up next has to be one of my favorite summer projects I've ever done, and it is this whiskey barrel table. So I found these planters for $15 each at Walmart. These are Better Homes and Gardens as well. And I thought in the store, I laid them like this and thought this would be awesome for the bottom of a table. So I grabbed two of those pots as well as one of these edge glued boards from Menards. 
and you can find those just in their regular wood section. They've got a variety of different sizes. I did a 24 inch and then I brought it home and stained the entire thing with Briar Smoke by Verithane Stain. Make sure to stir it up if you use this type of stain. I found that you can get two completely different colors if you don't completely stir it before you use it. I let that dry overnight and then I gave it a full light coat of Mod Podge and while that was setting, I created my stencil. I put the Mod Podge down so that when I put my stencil down, it's not gonna rip up all that pretty stain I just worked so hard on. So I found this tile SVG for free over on Kaluuya Design. So I will link that down below so you can find this file. What I decided to do was cut four copies of them at 11 and a half inches wide. I did four squares instead of two like 24 inch strips. So if you wanna cut on your long mat, have at it. But I just decided to use up my scraps to do four tiles essentially for the stencils. I went through and weeded out any of the pieces where I wanted my paint to be. And then I also used my Cricut Straight Cut to get that little piece off of the edges just so that they would line up and kind of fully match. So the circles would touch and it would look like kind of one pattern essentially instead of the four tiles. So then I peeled up my backing piece by piece and I'm just using paper transfer tape here from Expressions Vinyl, hands down the best thing you can use when you're transferring stencils in my opinion. And then I removed anywhere where I had some painter's tape to help hold it together. And then it was time to seal and paint. So I do another coat, light, light coat of Mod Podge wherever the paint is gonna go and that is to seal your stencil down. Your first coat was to seal down your stain. And then I took some elephant chalk paint, so it's just a dark gray from Waverly. I wanted this to have a print, but I did not want it to be too overpowering. So instead of doing like a white, I thought the gray would blend really nicely with the planter color for the base of the table. I'm just taking a foam brush and dabbing up and down two coats to get everything covered. Once it's about 75% dry, I go through and peel up all of the different pieces of vinyl. And when you're using your weeding tool, just make sure that you are doing it gently so you don't leave any holes or gouges in your wood. My last painting step was to touch up anything that had imperfections. And then I took it outside and gave it three coats of this super thick polyurethane from Verithane. It will keep it nice and sealed, especially if you have any drinks on it or if you're by a pool or it gets rained on, it will make sure that your paint's not gonna run everywhere. And then to assemble my table, I used this heavy duty construction adhesive from Gorilla and I got a cheap caulk gun from Home Depot, it was like four bucks. And I went through and put a bead of that construction adhesive around the outside of the bottom planter. And then I added my other planter flipped over on the top of it to make it look like a whiskey barrel. You could also use one of these with the tabletop if you want one next to like an Adirondack chair. If you want a shorter table, that would be pretty. And then I repeated the same step at the top to hook on my tabletop. I added some weight so it would dry with some pressure on the top. And then I realized that I added a little too much glue, but I was able to fix it, no problem. I had this paint, which is called Truffle by Waverly. It's just a dark brown color. And I just kind of dabbed it in because that construction adhesive is paintable. So I went through and just put some paint on top of it and then rubbed it in with a wet paper towel and that helped kind of buff it out and make it look like one cohesive piece as well. And here is what it looks like when it is complete. I absolutely love it. It would be cute to have two sets of these. They would look great out by a pool or if you have a porch to put those on to hold your lemonade or your sweet tea. I wish I had a porch so that we could put that on there, but maybe in the next house. Also, if you plan on using this outside and you need some counterbalance for weight, go ahead and add some bricks or rocks to the bottom of that first planter before you glue on the top to give it some more stability. Where I'm gonna put it, I didn't need that, but just FYI. This would be awesome. Also next to a fire pit for your s'more station. It's a pretty substantial table, but it does not take up a ton of space. And it would also be a great little lemonade table on your porch, like I mentioned. And what doesn't say welcome to your guests like a welcome mat? I put this same saying on a sign 
a few months back and the response was hilarious. You guys loved it. So I was gonna show you how to put it on a doormat. This doormat is 18 by 30 and it's under six bucks at Walmart, which is a great deal. Everywhere else I was finding them, they were 9.99 and up. So I wanted to share my fail with you first, just to prove that not everything works out every time. I just don't usually share it with you, but I thought I could use some Dollar Tree quick cover to keep it extra cheap. Unfortunately, my idea failed. So I decided to use some regular permanent vinyl. I recruited the help of my assistant to cut it out on my Cricut. And then I went through and weeded it just like a stencil like we did before. Once it was weeded, I added paper transfer tape just so it wasn't too sticky because I knew it wasn't gonna stick to the mat super great. So I stuck it down with my least sticky transfer tape, used a ruler to make sure it was centered, and then also used my scraper tool, my extra large one, to make sure that my little pieces didn't come up with the transfer tape. Once it was all applied, I used a mixture of my leftover transfer tape as well as painter's tape to mark off the entire thing. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of bubbles in there. So to set it, I just used my heat press at a low setting. So I did 275 for maybe five or 10 seconds on each section. And I just grabbed a piece of butcher paper to make sure I wasn't pressing directly on the vinyl, but it worked out really well and it looked kind of funky, but it pushed everything down to act as a better stencil. Then I took some spray paint to hopefully prolong the lifetime of the mat and gave it a quick spray. I made sure to spray directly down onto the mat instead of in an angle so it wouldn't really go underneath the stencil. And then I let it dry for about 20 minutes, peeled it off and voila. I've seen a lot of people do this with freezer paper and flex seal. There are a ton of different ways that you can make these. I just didn't have freezer paper on hand and I didn't want to have to go out and get it. So this worked just fine. My last step was to seal it. I just took some polycrylic cause that's what I had just to again, prolong the life of the mat. I really love this. It is kind of my low key way of saying no soliciting at our house too. I have nowhere to really stick a sign so somebody could see that. So hopefully they'll see my doormat and not solicit at my house. I can dream, right? Thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know down in the comments your favorite project from today's video. And also be sure to head down to the description for a link to Blondie Next Door's channel so you can check out her video as well. A huge thank you to her for collabing with me today. Be sure to hit subscribe if you are new so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Do you approve of this project? Oh, don't push it off the table. It's called Pyrex. Can you say Pyrex? Oh, 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 okay, okay, oh. Technical difficulties, okay.